Mike Bond joined now by the former UFC women's featherweight champion, Jermaine Durandamy, who returns from a long layoff on Saturday against Norma Dumont at UFC Fight Night 240. Jermaine, how are you? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. You know, it took a longer time because the bakery had to bake the cookies, but I'm finally I'm back. I'm finally found my way back. Yeah, and obviously I know a little bit about the reasons you've been gone and stuff, but for anyone watching this who may just be wondering why we haven't seen you since October 2020, can you kind of give us a little bit of the story of where you've been? Yeah, of course, of course. So the pen, so I fought Pena, then the pandemic, pandemic came, of course. Uh, I didn't get vaccinated because I wanted to become a mom one day. That was my wish since I was a little girl. Um, so um, I wasn't allowed to travel to the United States, so... And at the same time, you know, after the Pena fight, I was a little bit burned out. I've been fighting now for 25 years. Uh, um, so I was a little bit burned out. So I was like, you know, take some time off. And like I said, I'm not getting any younger. So uh, it was the right time for me to see if I could get a baby. And I got a baby. I'm the happiest woman alive right now. Yeah, congratulations. How has motherhood mm -hmm. been so far? Best thing ever. Best thing ever. He's my, that, he's my everything. How old is he now? He just became one last week. Oh, wow. Is he, did you bring him to fight week or is no. that too much? No, no, yeah. no, <laughs> no, 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 it's not, no, it's not too much because it was, you know, it was harder to prepare my, uh, it was harder to leave him behind at home than get ready for the fight. But we as parents decided that we don't want to expose our son to any violence. I don't take him to the gym. Um, he's young. He's a baby. He should enjoy life. He should not see his mom getting punched in the face. That's what we personally believe. So we uh, decided to leave him at home. Uh, but that was harder than getting ready for a fight. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. I haven't had children yet, but one day I imagine it's coming and I'll experience all that stuff. I can't imagine the balance between trying to train. and It, it is hard, but I, I wish and I hope for you that one day you'll be blessed with a child. Absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Um, so at what point along the way did you know you were like ready to take a fight again? Well, pretty soon. Well, five weeks after I gave birth to my son, I was back in training. Um, but if, if I didn't have my son, honestly, I, I didn't I don't know if I would have have come back to fighting again, you know. Oh. But having a son, you know, I'm not just raising a son. I'm raising somebody's husband one day. I'm raising um, a father probably someday. Um, and I want to set an example for him. I want to show him through hard work, dedication, that anything is possible in life. You know, I'm a, I want to be his role model. I want one time when he's ready and he understands, I want to show him, explain to him, and show him what I've done. And I hope that he'll be proud of me. And, yeah, it, I and, and I hope that he realizes and he takes strength out of it that anything is possible. You know, if yeah. you work hard and you dedicate yourself to things. For sure. So in your mind, was this like, do you just want the one fight post-birth to prove that? Or like, are you fully back wanting to go on a run with like new, renewed goals and all that stuff? I'm not here to just, I'm here for one thing and one thing only. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like goals. <laughs> yeah. You know, my son wants to go to college one day. So, you know, I want the belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Did you uh, continue to work as a police officer during the time between these fights? Yes, yes. I still work as a police officer. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So what's the schedule? Like, like, are you full time or did you take obviously a hiatus uh, from that while you were pregnant or how did all that work? No, you just get, you know, you just get time off to give labor and then uh, then you go back to work. So I'm back to work. I did. Took some time off work to prepare myself for the fight. This time, for the first time, just because, you know, coming back after such a long time and giving birth to a son, you know, it's, I had to see and figure out what works, what doesn't work, how to, how to schedule things. So I took some time off uh, right now to prepare myself for this fight. Uh, but uh, next week, I'm expected back at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was kind of like the physical transformation side of it? Cause I imagine you were, uh, you're never out of shape. You're always, you know, in fantastic condition and stuff like that to have kind of your body go through that process and have to bounce back. I know you said you were in the gym five weeks later, but was that challenging for you? 
No, not at all. No. I gave birth Sunday night on a Monday, and Thursday I was still working out. No. I can like every pregnancy is different, of course, you know. But if I can tell a woman one thing, if you're able to move during pregnancy, keep moving. It was an easy pregnancy for me. I enjoyed it, and as soon as I I was allowed to go out with the baby. We went every day for a hike, like five or 10 miles. We went walking outside. We go every day, we go outside. And no matter the weather, you know, we go outside. And it, it, honestly, it was, I was surprised because uh, going into this camp, I was faster, leaner uh, than ever before. I was like, within five months, I was below the weight I before. I, I became pregnant. So, you know, just living the healthy life, giving a good example. Yeah, that's very interesting because I remember, you know, it reminds me of Mackenzie Dern and she, before she had her child, she always had a lot of trouble making straw weight. And then after she gave birth, she said the weight cuts became so much easier. So it's kind of interesting what that could potentially do to your body in a beneficial way. And I think also it's a mindset, you know, after you become a parent, you know, uh, you're, the, the way you think, you know, things are different the things you do have a dis different perspective you know fighting is not just fighting anymore you do it with a different goal now than you did before so before it was solely because you liked it or it makes makes money or or whatever you know whatever reasons you have but now there it's it's different there are different reasons for fighting right now so it makes it easier for me personally let, let me speak for me but at the same time you know I'm getting older too. So, uh, you know, I had to, it was all, a ch it was all figuring out, you know, I'm, I'm going to become 40 soon. So it was all figuring out, Hey, how is my body going to react? How do I feel? And how is everything going? Yeah. But got a birthday. Out, I'm here. So we're ready to yeah. go. Yeah. And how much have you, I guess, been keeping tabs on everything in the past three and a half years? Cause you obviously look at your resume, three of your past four wins are against Juliana Pena, Raquel Pennington and Holly Holm. We kind of know everything that goes on in their careers. So like, have you been watching as, you know, Amanda retired and Juliana upset her and now Raquel being the champion, or were you kind of tuned out of the MMA cycle in a, in a way? Because I wasn't here, doesn't because I didn't fight, it didn't mean I didn't watch, I didn't train, yeah. you know. I watched it all happen. I yeah. watched it all happen. So uh, for now, like I said, I have to be focused on uh, Norma. I'm gonna fight Norma Dumont. You know, I respect her, and uh, she's gonna bring her own things to the table to me. You know, so I cannot look past her. But uh, after Saturday night, if I beat her, we'll talk again, and then. Yeah, it's my time now. It's my time yeah. now. Is there any concerns going into Friday with Norma? Because she, she's struggled to make bantamweight before, and I don't even know if she's actually made 136 so far in the UFC. No. You know, I trained hard for this fight. A few pounds over, I don't mind. We're going <laughs> to fight one way or another. I didn't flew all the way to Vegas, left my son at home, you know, my everything, to not fight. If she doesn't make weight, it doesn't matter. We're going to fight anyways. I'm telling you right now, we're going to fight. No matter okay. what. I'm here. I came here. We're going to fight. Yeah. Have you been impressed with her at all in the UFC? I mean, obviously, I don't even know if she was fighting much like in the UFC when you last fought. So have you? what have you thought of like kind of what she's done so far? I respect everybody. I respect Norma. You cannot overlook anybody. Remember, I'm the one to beat. Mm-hmm. I beat so many top contenders. I'm the one to beat for any opponent to get to that title shot. I'm not yeah. the champion, but I am the step up to the title fight. You know, no, 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 no. I cannot overlook her. I respect her, but still I'm going to try and put my will on her. Yeah, it seems like uh, the next title fight might be Raquel and Juliana. Obviously, you beat both of them. Uh, who do you think wins that fight? I'm going to fight Raquel next. I you think so. Yeah. Listen, yeah. Juliana Pena is out of the rankings because she's been inactive. The division is quite dead since Amanda left, right? We got a great fight next week with Kayla versus Holly. But I defeated Holly. I defeated Pena. I defeated Raquel. Raquel asked everybody she lost to to rematch except me. My only loss in the UFC comes by the hand of Amanda Nunes. I defeated Larissa Pacheco. I defeated Aspen Leth, a prospect. 
if I defeat Norma Saturday, I'm going to ask the UFC very friendly to give me my title shot because I should be the one fighting next for the yeah. title. And I, res- I absolutely respect Raquel. Don't absolutely. But a true champion knows if you ask anybody you, re- to, you lost to, to rematch, then you should also rematch me. Pena yeah. is out. When, why, why should we wait? The division since Amanda left, you know, is a little bit quiet. Not a lot of things happening. Let's make it exciting again. Yeah, no, I think that's a great argument for sure. And I mean, the only, if you have a strong performance, I think there's a great case there. The only thing that I would maybe wonder in the back of my mind is it seems like they're building a lot of hype around Kayla Harrison right now. She's kind of the flavor of the month. And if she does something spectacular at UFC 300, maybe she's there. But Raquel has already said that she doesn't, think she would deserve a title shot off one fight no, in the UFC. She, so. just came, she can't just came to the UFC. He cannot fight one fight and then fight for the title. Maybe. Mm-hmm. And of course, she still has to make 135 too. She never fought at 135 either. I think she's going to make, she's a professional. You know what I'm saying? But why do we count out Holly? Come oh. on. That's not fair to Holly. Holly deserves the respect too. Right? We yeah. cannot count anybody out. Anything can happen in fighting. Yeah. I was were you surprised? Girls, but we cannot count anybody out. For sure. Were you surprised when they signed Kayla and said she was going to fight at 135? Like, do you think? I know you said she think you think she'll make that weight, but were you surprised by kind of that whole bit of news? No, no. Yeah. And I, you know what? I'm first of all, I'm not surprised, and second of all, why would I worry about that? You know, the more to marry, right? Yeah. How cool is that? I mean. Yeah. If you fight, you want to get, you want to have that challenge. You want to fight with the best. So why not? Like I said, the more the merry. Let's make the division alive again. The 135 division used to be the strongest and the most active and the most craziest division. And now it's not anymore. Let's make it happen again. Yeah, I love the passion. And I guess just last thing, um, you mentioned, you know, a birthday coming later this month and everything. It's been a few years. Like, how, do you feel like, you know, despite the activity, the pregnancy, like, have you evolved a lot in this three and a half years? Do you feel like when you go in there, you're a significantly better fighter, technique, skill wise, all those things than the last time we saw you? The most important thing, because 75% of fighting is here. I'm a yeah. fighter at heart. I've been fighting for 25 years. Mm-hmm. Here, I'm the strongest I've ever been. I cannot say that. Do I expect to be the ve- best version of myself this Saturday after three and a half years? No. But what I do know, I gave it my all in this camp, and I will give it my all Saturday. So no matter what happens Saturday night, I will walk out of that octagon with my head held high. Because Sunday, the sun will go up, and I will jump on the plane, and go back home and cuddle with my son. And that's all that matters. It's about the journey, not about the result. I'm going to give it my all this Saturday. And that's all that matters. I love it. We know you will. Uh, it's great to have you back, Jermaine. I specifically wanted to talk to you because I know they didn't bring you to media day. You should be the freaking co-main event on this card, but that's a whole other conversation there. But <laughs> glad we got to speak. Um, I have best of luck on Saturday, and I'm glad to see you back in the mix. It's very much welcome. I appreciate in the you took the time to talk to me. Thank you so much, man.